Welcome to this complete guide to setting up and using Bartender 4. In this video, you're going to learn how to move and style bars, set up Druid and Stealth states, and create custom visibility conditions. Everything I cover here will work for classic and for retail, so let's get started. The first step is to install Bartender from your favorite add-on manager or from the CurseForge website. I'll leave a link for a video that walks you through that process in the description. Once you have it installed and enabled, you can open the settings window by typing forward slash btn chat or by right clicking on the bartender mug icon on your minimap. For this guide, I'm going to start building the UI from one of the built in presets, but you could easily start from scratch if you want. To use presets, you can simply click on presets in the left menu and then select one from the drop down and hit the button to apply it. I think the most promising preset to start with here is the three bar stacked settings. If we apply that one, and then go to the blizzard art bar option on the left, we can disable the griffins for a cleaner action bar look. This looks a little funny with the XP bar in the middle of the icon, so let's talk quickly about how to move things in Bartender. The first way you can move things is by unchecking the lock option at the top of the settings window. This will make everything green and will allow you to left click and drag to move things. You can also enable moving by left clicking the minimap icon for Bartender. So now let's move the XP bar to a better spot. I personally like it on the bottom of the screen, but you can move it to the top or even shrink it and place it under your minimap. Now let's move bar one to just above the XP bar, and you'll notice that it's bouncing around and trying to snap into place. If the snapping is stopping you from placing the bar where you want, you can disable it in the pop-up window or by holding shift while you click and drag the bar. Let's now grab the other bars and then stack those on top of bar one. If you have OCD like me and you're worried about getting the bars in the right spot, you can center your bars on the screen. To do this, click on the bar you want to center in the left menu and then select the positioning tab. Now, if you click on center horizontally, it will be aligned perfectly on your screen. You can also download an add-on like Pixel Perfect Align to make sure everything is in the right spot. To use Pixel Perfect Align, simply install it and then left click on the minimap icon to add a grid to the screen. If the lines don't stretch all the way across the screen, you can right click the icon instead and increase the grid line length slider all the way. Even after centering the bars, they still look a little wonky because of all the space between the icons. To fix this, you can go back into the settings and reduce the padding. I like a nice clean bar, so I usually set the padding to zero. Then you just need to recenter and do the same thing for the other bars. After removing that padding, you may notice that you need to unlock the bars and move them around again to get everything looking just right. If you want more than the three rows of spells provided in the preset, you can enable more bars. You can do that by clicking Enable under the General Settings tab for a specific bar. So if I go ahead and enable bar 2 with everything unlocked, you'll see it pop up. You can also create different sized action bars with the buttons and rows sliders. For example, if I grab my bar 1 and move the rows slider, you can see the bartender will square it off, and by the time I reach 12 rows, it's completely vertical. Changing the button slider, on the other hand, will make the action bar shorter. I don't typically change from the default one row setting, but the option is there if you want to get fancy. On a side note, you can also change the overall size of each bar by moving the scale slider until it fits in with the other elements in your UI, but I usually tend to leave that around one. Okay, before we move on, let me know if this content is helping you by slamming the like button. Now let's make sure that the other UI elements are set up. You may have noticed that the bag and the menu icons have disappeared. If you use hotkeys to access them, you might be okay with that but I personally like having them on my screen. So I'm gonna reopen my settings and select the bag bar. After enabling it, I'm going to check the box for one bag and drop the scale to 0.8. I also want to turn the micro menu back on and reset the scale to one. I like to have both of these underneath my chat box so I can leave the right side of my screen open for details meters or for other add-ons. I also like to go to the visibility tab and enable the fade out so that my menu and my bag are transparent until I hover over them. You can apply this same fade to any bar, but I usually just use it for these ones. The last bar setting you can check on if you want is the stance bar. This will allow classes like Druid to see all their forms in one bar. I already have my stances in another bar, so I'll just leave that disabled. And that leads us to one of the most confusing things about Bartender, state configuration. This is only going to apply to shape-shifting classes like Druid or stealth classes like Rogue, so if it doesn't apply to you, feel free to use the video chapters to skip to the next section. If you're playing a druid, using bartender may feel overwhelming at first, but we'll break it down here to make it easy. The blizzard action bars swap everything automatically when you change forms, but you have to take a few extra steps to make sure it's set up in bartender. To set it up, you need to navigate to your main action bar 
or the action bar you want to change when you shapeshift or stealth, and then go to the state configuration tab. Now make sure that it's enabled and look for the section called stance configuration. This is where you will tell bartender which bars you want it to switch to when you change forms or stealth. If you look at my settings, you can see that I have my bear form set to page nine, cat page seven, cat stealth page eight, and moonkin page 10. So if I shift into moonkin form and enable page 10, you can see that my bar one now matches what I have for bar 10. If you set it up right, you should be able to leave your stance bars where they are on screen and disable them. If that doesn't work, you can also enable your stance bars and overlap them with bar one, which shouldn't be a problem as long as your pages are correct in the state configuration settings. With your bars in place and states configured, you're ready to apply your key binds. While you can stick with your default blizzard bindings, I recommend setting up bindings in the bartender options. To do this, simply open the settings window and click the key bindings button at the top. This will turn binding mode on, which will allow you to hover over buttons and set them to whatever keys you want. If you check the box for character specific key bindings, those bindings will apply only to the current tune and won't be shared across characters. So let's just go ahead and put a few bindings on my bars here. I typically like to do something like one through five on the first bar and then shift one through five on the next bar up. From there, I use a mix of buttons near my movement keys like Z, V, X, and T. This is an alt that I never play and I threw the spells wherever for this video, so the bindings won't make much sense, but make sure to take the time to get something that works well for you. If you want to take your action bars to the next level, you can style them with the mask, M-A-S-Q-U-E add-on. You'll want to download the main mask add-on by StormFX and any custom skins that you want to apply. For this video, I grabbed the mask calf and mask serenity skins, but feel free to test them out until you find one you like. To apply the styling, you just need to install the mask add-ons and then type forward slash MSQ in chat. Then select bartender four from the list and change the skin drop down to one that you like. This is how you can get cool circular or squared off icons. What is even better is that Mask will apply the same skin to other add-ons like Weak Auras or Hakili. Bartender also has some pretty cool advanced features built in like custom conditionals. If you're familiar with macro conditionals, this works the same way. Basically, you can make rules for when certain bars show or hide. There are a ton of things you can do with this feature, but let's walk through one of the most popular uses. A condition is a simple true-false check based on your situation in game. The way you check a condition in macros or bartender is by putting a conditional keyword in square brackets. I'm not going to go over every conditional keyword, but I'll put a link to this WowWiki article for a list to reference. As an example, if I go into the visibility tab for bar 5 and then click on use custom condition, I can start putting code in. Let's use this to set up a condition to show the bar only when I have a target. Based on the WoW wiki list, it looks like I want to use the exists condition, so I'll open a square bracket and type exist and then close the bracket. Now I need to tell bartender what I want it to do when that condition is true. Luckily, all I need to do is use the word show or hide. So immediately after my condition, I'm going to type show, which tells bartender to show that bar if I have a target. I also want to tell bartender what to do if I don't have a target. I can do that by typing a semicolon right after the word show and then tell bartender to hide the bar. Putting it all together, I'm telling bartender to check and see if I have a target. And if I do, I want it to show. Otherwise, I want to hide the bar. As an important note, using custom conditionals will override all the rules for the checkboxes above. But if you click on the copy conditionals button, it will create a template of all of your existing conditions to work off of. Let's do that and make one of the most popular conditionals one which shows your bars only in combat or if we have a target. To start off, I'm going to click copy conditionals and you can see that this will hide my bar five in pet battles, when the override bar is active or when I'm in a vehicle. These are some good conditions to keep, but let's add the other conditions to it. To do that, I'm going to erase this last show and then type our exist condition from earlier. Now I want it to also check for combat so I can put the word combat in square brackets and then put show semicolon and hide after that. Now you have a little condition that will only show your bars when you're in combat or when you have a target. From there, you can highlight your code and copy it to the other bars. If you decide to use this conditional, I would recommend that you remove the override bar and vehicle UI conditions for bar one, or you may run into some problems. The end result should be three conditions for pet battle, exist, and combat. If we put it all together, you will see that we now have a clean UI where the bars only show up when we need them for a target or combat. Once you have all your bars and conditions set up, you can then share your settings across multiple characters 
by going to the Profiles menu and selecting the one you just made from the existing Profiles dropdown. Hopefully this guide helped you out. If it did, let me know in the comments and tell me what add-ons you'd like to see complete guides for in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.